What is going on guys? Broken Machine here. Welcome to the Battlefield 2042 beta settings guide. We're going to start off here on console and then at the end I'm going to go into some specific PC player options. So fire up your console and let's get into this. Inverts vertical look, do you play inverted or not? Set on or off as you please. Camera shake amount, set this to zero. Leave crossplay on for both of these. Hints for controls if you're a new player. Again, down here, personal preference. I would leave all of these on for now. Onto the communication tab. Turn off voice chat if you don't want it. Turn on if you do. And there's some controls here for your microphone and you can lower the game audio here. I'm sure you can change these yourselves. Next, we have the network tab. If you're having connection issues, lag and such, record your gameplay and turn this on and send it to Dice or EA. If not, completely ignore this tab. Display, I'd recommend a field of view of around 74. The higher you go, the more you can see around you, but targets become smaller and thus much harder to hit. If you go super narrow, targets become bigger, but you can often have tunnel vision and you lose all of that peripheral vision. For the vehicles, I'd recommend turning this all the way up so you can see all around you. ADS field of view, one of these options gives you an extra little zoom, one does not. I quite like that lack of zoom. I used to want that little zoom, but personally, I don't need it anymore. Brightness, leave it on 50. Set motion blur down to zero and turn all of these options off at the bottom. Turn on the hood, turn it off if you wanna record screenshots or make your gameplay look really nice. Camera shake amount set to zero. Colorblind options here if you're colorblind. Show awards, that's when a ribbon pops up. Turn off if you don't wanna see that. Show vehicle seat, leave that on and you can see who's in which seat on your vehicle on the heads up display. Show critical messages, you may as well leave that on. Kill log is the kill feed and you can set the specific options here if you only want to see certain things. Crosshair opacity, turn that down if you don't want to see the crosshair as much. Uh, you can actually change the thickness of the crosshair. I would leave this on default. You can drop it down and make it really thin if you like, but personally, that's what I prefer. Now on console, you can't actually change the crosshair colors at the moment, at least for me. I'd actually recommend a nice green or a purple or a red uh, rather than the default white. Personally, I think those stand out pretty well, particularly around, uh, particularly against all the backdrops. Um, recently, I have actually been using a pink in Battlefield 1 and BF5, and for me, that works really well. You can change the opacity for the hit indicator here if you wish. And of course, you can change the hit color, headshot color, kill color, and arm hit indicator colors down here. Again, these aren't working properly on console. They are on PC. If you can manage to change them, I'd recommend having a blue for hit color, red for headshot, and a green for kill, and yellow for armor hit indicator color. So if you get the standard hit, you'll see blue, headshot red, so you know you've done a ton of damage and you might just need a body shot. And as soon as you see green, you know you can snap to the next target or be on your way. Minimap opacity, if you don't want to see the minimap so much, turn that down and you can set it to rotate with you if you wish. Some options here for the opacity on the hood options, hood icon, sorry. If you want to change these, go for it. Next up, we have the sound here. Leave master volume on 100. Drop the music if you don't want to hear that. Personally, I like it on 20. I just like a bit of music, but not too much. Leave sound effects and in-game announcer at 100. Do drop the in-game announcer if you find it a little bit annoying. Now, speaker configuration. I'd recommend, firstly, to try war tapes. This amplifies everything. It's a little distorted, but it sounds absolutely amazing. Footsteps, you can definitely hear them on those. Personally, I use the Astro EQ. I've got Astro E40 headphones and that works for me. It sounds great. 3D headphones is also a good mix to try as well if you've got those. Honestly, you'll be fine with most of these. The audio in Battlefield is pretty awesome. It is. Turn off audio in background if you don't want that. Hit indicator, you can actually change this to the BF1 style if you wish. And in world music, you'll hear music in cars and there's a little location on the map that I won't say, but uh, you might hear some music there as well. So you can change those options if you wish. Voice chat, turn off if you don't want to hear that. Some options there again for the voice chat. Um, totally personal preference there. For me, I don't like voice chat on. I find it kind of annoying and I communicate over Discord anyway. Now onto the controller tab. I'd recommend changing the on foot buttons to alternates. The right analog stick will now become your crouch button and B 
or circle on PlayStation will become Melee. Now for the rest of the controls, I will be going into these more in depth when the full game releases, just like my previous guides. But for now, I would recommend having a play with these yourself. All you need to do is spawn into a game, go to the starting spawn on the map, jump into a vehicle and have a play there. The reason I say this is currently in the game, the controls are not the same. As far as I'm aware, I'm pretty sure they are not the same as the BF4 veteran controls and it's completely thrown my flight skills off balance. I binned one of the first hellers and it's just not working for me. So unless you know exactly what you want here, I would recommend having a play because I'm sure they are not the right controls. Now on foot, soldier stick aim sensitivity. I use 100, that is the maximum. I've always used that. I would recommend somewhere between 30 and 50 for most players, you'll be fine with that. Do not use 100 just because I do. It works for me, I've used it for ages, and those are my recommendations. Invert vertical look, personal preference. FOV again, soldier sprint. All of these options are really personal preference and you can change the keybinds if you wish. Now the soldier zoom aim sensitivity. Now, if it's like previous games and this should be correct at time of recording, if you put 100 here, this will mean your aim down sight sensitivity is 100% of your hip fire sensitivity. Now, if you want it to feel like Call of Duty or other games where traditionally your aim down sight sensitivity is halved, drop this down to 50. All of these are really personal preference down here. Now, vertical stick aim ratio, I will check this out on the full game. For now, I would recommend leaving these at default values. I don't think these are correct. I've had a play of these and it doesn't feel right in my opinion. If you want all of your sights to feel exactly the same in the sense that if you turned 90 degrees with an iron sight and then did the same with a sniper scope, turn on this uniform soldier aiming. Leave the coefficient at default zoom transition sensitivity smoothing turn this off if you want your sensitivity to instantly kick in as soon as you start zooming in have it set to on if you don't if you do go down the route of uniform soldier aiming leave all of these options on default inverts vertical look personal preference recommend turning off vibration so you can control your aim a little better vehicle aim ratio leave it on default again i will look into all of these options for the final release sensitivity i like all of these around 50 that's fine for me i don't think you need to be too accurate in vehicles with the sensitivity try it see if it works for you use a value something that's like a half of what you normally do on infantry or if you want it the same just just have it the same again it's personal preference really all of these options once again personal preference again just to reiterate i will be checking all of these in the final game controller tuning turn off vibration Drop the dead zone down to about 17. That should do you just fine. That is how responsive the controller is. If you want the controller to be less responsive, just turn it all the way up. I'd also recommend leaving these actual dead zone and max input threshold at their default values. You want to put the dead zone to the, uh, to the right stick, the same as the left, unless you have a personal preference with this one. Again, all these other dead zone settings, actual and input threshold, leave on default values you can change them it will feel more responsive but your aim may just go all over the place as for the controller triggers drop these all the way down to zero and as soon as you aim down sight or fire your weapon it will instantly recognize that input joystick change these if you have a joystick accessibility menu narration if you need that turn it on colorblind options again turn off motion blur turn off camera shake amount turn off vibration Reload hints, I just leave that on. Honestly, it's personal preference. And hints for controls, you may as well leave it on, particularly if you're new at the game. Soldier sprint in the controls here. Toggle hold, personal preference. Again, all of these personal preference. There is a nice neat option here on PS5 and PS4 users in the accessibility menu. I'm sure there is something similar on Xbox. If you go to the controller tab and click custom button assignments, enable custom button assignments over here, and then edit the buttons, you can actually flip L1 and L2 and R1 and R2. So you can aim down sight with L1 and fire with R1. Personally, I've done this for years and it feels incredibly responsive. I would highly recommend you do this. All right, onto the PC settings. The first start of the guide should cover most of this. 
I'd recommend setting full screen mode to full screen, set the resolution to the highest and refresh rate to the highest your monitor can provide. I'd recommend leaving the brightness on 50, HDR, uh, high dynamic range on off, motion blur off, all of these options set to off. Now I've been playing with controller on max fidelity all day on PC. I've tried a little bit of mouse and keyboard today as well, and that feels good to me. Of course, you can set this to ultra if you want the maximum graphics. It looks amazing. If you really want the max FPS, I'd probably recommend setting all of these to low or off on the bottom ones here and setting the mesh quality to ultra. And that should allow you to see players at long ranges a little bit better. I'm sure that's exactly how it works. Uh, dynamic resolution scale, turn that to off. Video reflex low latency enabled and boost if you have those options. Future frame rendering, set it to on if you want a little bit more frames, but there will be a little bit more increased input lag. Personally, didn't really notice it that much. I had it on today. Um, I am going to be trying it off, but uh, it feels good with it on. If you want that uh, less input lag, do set it to off. And of course, turn off vertical sync. You do not want that. Mouse and keyboards, again, vertical look, that's personal preference. Now the mouse raw input, a few of the people I've spoke to and me personally have actually found this a little bit funky. So we've actually turned it off. Now normally you'd set this on so you get the raw input of your mouse. But for now, I would actually recommend trying both options and seeing which one feels better to you. Now, of course, on PC, we have some custom key bindings. I've tried these and they are not working for me. They might work for you. I'd recommend trying it and seeing if it does. Uh, often PC players uh, bind the pitch down or the pitch up to the space bar. Personal preference again, but you might want to look into that and change it yourself. Uh, the reason I've been trying to change the key bindings is because I was using controller with the heli and trying to set up a custom control scheme and none of these was, were working for me today. So you might have some good luck there, but for me, it is just not working. That's all my settings. I'll be going into a much more in-depth guide and much more detail when the final release is here. For now, these are my settings, my recommendations. Obviously, I've not checked every single one here. There is a lot to talk about. With the vehicles, I'm sure you can have a play yourself and use what works for you. It only takes a minute to see what works. Try it, give it a go. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this guide. Always jump into Battlefield 2042 of you guys, especially on Portal. Gonna be some good memes. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, guys. Catch you later.